Welcome back to JA Economics for Success, Session 5, Keeping Score. This activity is going to get to talk to the students a little bit about credit score and a little bit more in-depth look at credit in general. What you want to do is remind the students what you learned about last time, which was Savvy Shopper and the advantages and disadvantages of using credit. What you'll notice is that there are some great discussion prompts in your guidebook that correspond with the students' workbooks in page 19 and 20. So you want to use these as to kind of guide your discussion and content as you begin today's activity. The actual activity of the day is called Keeping Score, and there's a little bit of prep to this activity that you want to make sure to do before you go into the classroom. So what you'll notice is that there are a pack of Keeping Score game cards. So what you'll notice is that there are four sheets of paper that go to every team that's going to be playing. So there's six sets of four. And you'll notice in your packet, they are, there's usually, they're divided by either a white or a colored piece of paper. So you want to keep these four sheets of paper separate so that you can have that group go to group one. So what you would want to do is you would want to tear these apart. And what you'll notice is that there are scenario cards and then there are title cards. So you would want to keep all the scenario cards together. Then you'd want to take the six discard cards together, the six exchange cards, and then the six accept required draw cards. And you'd want to put them together with a paper clip. And what I like to do is then take my three sets of title cards and then my scenario cards, and I like to just put a rubber band on them so that when I get into the classroom, I can just easily hand this whole set to the first team the next set to the second team, etc. Once the students get into their small groups, what they're going to do is they want to put the scenario cards in the center of their circle. So they just want to sit in a circle and they want to put those in the center of it with the keeping score face up. Then you want to have each student take one each of these cards. So every student gets a discard card, an accept required draw card, and an exchange card. What they are going to do then, and these directions are outlined for you, and again, they're kind of confusing. So before the students get into their small groups, I would do an example um, in front of the whole group in the class. I would maybe pull up a student and a teacher to, to illustrate this game. Then I would have them get into their small groups and reiterate those instructions. The students have three options, or four options really, when they get their scenario card. This game is really trying to illustrate credit scores and how sometimes things um, happen that increase our credit score and some things happen that decreases our credit score. These are not actual credit score options. You'll notice the point system is 5, 10, 20, or 30. It's not in the hundreds like a regular credit score would be. This is really to illustrate what moves it up and down, not the numbers specifically. So each student would draw a scenario card. So for example, my card says that I'm going to be adding five points. This player says lose 20 points. This one says lose five points. And this one says add 20 points. So what the students get to do is they have three options that they can use throughout the game. They can only use the option once. That's why they have a card. So once they use it, they need to turn it in. So what they get to do is they can choose to discard the card they have, um, they have and choose a new one. They could choose to exchange with someone that has not already had a turn in the game. So for example, if I have the add five points, I might want to exchange my card with a person who has add 20 points. That would be very beneficial for me. Or you can do the accept required draw, which means you accept the card you have, but you require somebody who has not played yet in the round to discard their card and draw a new one. So for example, I might want to be mean and have the person with 20 points have to turn that one in, hoping that they would get something more negative. Um, so you're going to allow the students to play and they are going to get to play multiple rounds. So they get to record their scores on the bottom of page 20 in their student workbooks. What you'll notice is that the person who gets to start rotates after every activity or after every round so that the person who starts is always changing so that everybody has the opportunity to make that best, that first decision on, on how they're going to use their cards. 
So after each round, they would then um, put their scenario cards to the side and they would each draw a new scenario card and they would start the whole process over using the remaining cards that they have not yet turned in throughout the game. What you'll notice is that there is a summary and review and it really just allows the students the opportunity to talk about what, what surprised them in the activities. What we want them to do is to actually read the scenario. As I just did, I jumped to just the points, and many middle school students are going to do that. They're going to look at the bold point that says you lose two points. But the content and what we really want them to see is what's read. So one thing I often do is I always tell the students, if you don't read it out loud, then you don't get points for that round. And so that's just one extra element you could throw in there if you want to make sure that they're reading the content out loud to the whole group. And again, as they play the game, at the end you can use the bulleted items that are listed in the book before the summary and review to kind of recap the game to see what were some of those elements that really surprised the students. Enjoy the session.